Welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. Joe Johnson across the desk. I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, we're already in week three, so we're going to go over week two's recap. And unfortunately, week two, there was more scoring than week one, but there was also far more meaningful injuries. Casualties, as I like to call Ugh. them. Yeah, and they're not even short-term injuries. There's a lot of long-term injuries. And the list just keeps stacking up as the week went on, it feels like. Um, we've lost Isaiah Pacheco to IR now. Uh, Cooper Cup, Cup is on the IR. Along A.J. With- Brown, they said several weeks. Yeah, Debo Samuel now is, uh, did he get IR or just a couple? He also has A.J. Brown kind of like a couple weeks, they think. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it, that's the other thing is it's not just, you know, your basic names. It's not just the guys that sit on the bench. It's the star players. It is. And that's kind of the hardest thing to deal with right those now. Those are high draft picks, and it's hard to fill those vacancies with someone who can put up points. So that's why a deep bench uh, comes in handy. And you got to be ready to insert those bench players. Don't yeah. go, you know, something happened this past uh, weekend that I think we'll talk about a little bit later. But in, uh, one team in our league uh, went to, when A.J. Brown was out, this team owner went and picked up his backup mm-hmm. when had he just played someone on his bench, he might've won. Yeah. So don't overthink things, build yourself a dependable bench. Even if you're putting points on the bench, at least they're your points. They're not someone yeah. else's points. So yeah. don't, don't give up on your bench so quickly. Mm-hmm. Another thing that's really important with injuries is, and especially now that in the ON TV league, at least we have two flex spots. If there's ever a question questionable tag on your player going into the weekend, put them in the flex position mm-hmm. because you don't want to get strapped where you have them in the wide receiver position and you don't have enough wide receivers to replace him on the bench, and then all of a sudden he gets out and you have to pick up a wide receiver. Yeah. So it's best to do it in the flex so you have more options um, as far as replacements. Whenever there's an injured player, I would just recommend putting them in the flex. Now, if you have too many injured players, then... You're kind of in trouble, but yeah, now you got to start thinking trades and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that's why it's important to uh, to have depth and everything. Yeah. But um, other than the the sadness of the injuries, how did your your week two go as far as fantasy? Well, it, it, there's ups and downs. Without uh, spoiling the ONTV league, of course. But yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I had a lot of disappointing performances on my uh, my team, but somehow I came away with a win. We'll get into those details in a little bit, um, but uh, heading into week three, I'm two and zero. I'm excited, crazy, and you're six and zero across all three of your leagues. Yeah, so I'm in three different leagues. Uh, uh, we have two snake drafts, one one auction draft, and I am six and zero across all three leagues. I'm really excited. It's crazy. pretty awesome, and I am. I, I'm pretty sure I'm three and three. <laughs> I'm one three and one in every league, <laughs> so I don't know what that means, but um. I, I enjoyed watching the football games a lot more this weekend, I felt like, than the first week, just because there was more scoring. Um, well, it's a little different for me because I was at the Lions game. So I'm watching uh, the players on the field while glancing at my phone, trying to get score updates. And uh, for those of you who might not know, I was having a really hard time with data on my phone trying to get scores. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this Ford Field Wi-Fi. And considering that there's, what, 50,000 people in the stand, the Ford Field Wi-Fi worked really, really well. Mm-hmm. I was able to start getting updates immediately. So mm-hmm. if, you go, if you're if you at Ford Field and you want to check scores, uh, tap into their Wi-Fi. But uh, it, was, it was fun being at the game. But I did miss uh, watching the Red Zone on Sunday. Yeah, it, it's always tough when the when the Lions play at the one o'clock games because I also want to be trying to keep track of red zone, but I also want to just watch the Lions at the same time. So it's like that weird balance. That's why I love when they have primetime games, or even this upcoming weekend they're the four twenty five slot. Yeah. So they're one of the later games. I don't care about red zone as much in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, slot so I can enjoy the red zone for the first uh slate of games and then really lock in in the Lions. So well, this past Sunday, there was only three games in the afternoon red zone slate, yeah. and that's rough. They had, t- I think they said they had 10 in the 1 o'clock slate, which is the most that they're going to have all season. Yeah. So that made the, the afternoon even less, which 
It that's, felt like a bye week. Yeah, and that's something they've, they've been trying to fix is giving more afternoon games so that it's not a, a big fall off. Yeah. Um, but we do have two Monday night games this week, so there's going to be Ooh. four teams on Monday night, which is going to be okay. uh, weird. But I'm not a fan of that. Just I'm, give us one game on Monday night. Yeah, I'm not like a big fan games. either, but it does make it fun for fantasy Yeah. because you have a lot of the mon- late Monday night comebacks, um, and that was kind of the tail of the tape, I would say, this week for me. There's yeah. a lot of Monday night comebacks. Yeah. Um, so let's get into the scores. And the first score we're going to do is the highest score of the week. Becky with her halftime honeybees. I, she wasn't even aware of it. I just mentioned it to her in the <laughs> office a little while ago. I'm like, you're the top scorer of the week. She's like, I was. <laughs> yeah. So Becky put up 156.7 oh. and she beat Kelsey later 119.64. Um, Becky just had an all-around great weekend. Did she get a touchdown from everybody? Uh, uh, I'm not sure, but I will say oh, this. Jalen Waddell did not. George Pickens. <laughs> Most of the top. <coughs> all the guys at the top of her lineup did, though, however. Yeah, I will say this. Anyone who gave up on Marvin Harrison Jr. after week one, you should be <laughs> yeah. ashamed of yourself. You shouldn't be playing fantasy football. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that I know that did own Harrison started Harrison in week two, and their patience paid off. Yeah, He looked spectacular, mm-hmm. and he's going to be a top-tier receiver moving forward. Yeah, especially with, with rookies, you have to be patient. It, it's always going to take time and getting into a new offense. And, I mean, Arizona is kind of – making a comeback and so they're like Kyler Murray still ha- didn't play the full season last year so they're they're still kind of working things back in and yeah I, I think they're going to be a good offense going forward Drake London finally getting a touchdown was nice to see yeah not only to help fantasy teams but to give uh Falcons the win yeah that, uh, that was, was a crazy game yeah. mm-hmm. uh David Montgomery kind of just doing his thing uh didn't have a crazy good game but he did find the end zone and then James Conner, a part of the Arizona just domination of the Rams, which was, even without Cooper Cup, was a bit surprising to see the Rams falter that badly. Yeah, I thought it was going to be more of a shootout. And, uh, you know, I think before halftime, the Rams were down like three scores. I'm like, yeah. I did not expect that. Right. And the crazy thing is, now that I'm just looking at it, Becky had three Arizona players in that game, yeah. all of who scored touchdowns. Yeah, all had double digits. Yeah, and, and right McBride, around twenty. McBride's starting to establish himself as one of the elite, mm-hmm. only elite tight ends in this league. It was another down week for tight ends, but McBride yeah. scoring uh, eighteen point seven, mm-hmm. and uh, he had a good uh, good week. So McBride yeah. was a good pickup if uh, that's who your tight end is. Yeah, and again, we have to mention Brandon Aubrey, the kicker that just keeps on going. Well, he only scored 17 points. Yeah, there only. were other kickers who outscored him. Yeah. So it's weird when 17 points is kind of a down week for your kicker. Yeah, I, I I would say, and I might be a betting man to say that it's potential that kickers are averaging more points than quarterbacks yeah. right now. Well, that's a, that's a fact that I noticed. I do a little article in uh, the other auction league that we do, and as I was writing up the article and looking up stats – uh, I, last night I was able to see the top 10 starter performances. Mm-hmm. So these players had to have started on Sunday and of the top 10, eight of them in that particular league were wide receivers. The number two was occupied by the Houston kicker and number one was Camara. Not a single quarterback mm-hmm. starter finished in the top 10 performers. To me, that's shocking Yeah, because quarterbacks have the opportunity to put up three touchdowns a game, 300 right. yards, and not a single quarterback finish in the top 10. Now, I will say that the team that owned um, the Cardinals quarterback uh, did not start him. Right. He would have cracked the top 10 had he started him. But still, that's a shocking stat that mm-hmm. quarterbacks aren't putting up the numbers right now. Right, yeah. And, and like, in our auction league, kickers do get a little bit more points. Um, but even then, like, normally it's not – typical for them to outscore quarterbacks. They have big games every once in a while, yeah. but they're doing it consistently right now. Well, Fairbairn, I mean, my goodness, he had, he had kicked four uh, field goals and three of them were 50 plus yards. One yeah. was 59 yards. Mm-hmm. So if you say, oh my God, how did he score so many points? Well, he 
when you kick 50 <laughs> yarders like you're kicking a chip shot, yeah. uh, you you deserve those points. And I, I like assigning more points to a kicker just to make them relevant. Otherwise, mm. what's the point of having <laughs> kickers in yeah, our league? I, there's a lot of leagues that don't use kickers these days. Yeah, so. I like just giving them points. Yeah. Um, on the other side, Marie's team, uh, she's having a rough, a rough go of it so far this year. Um, she's feeling that same thing that you felt last year with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, he's mm-hmm. just not, he's not looking great. And I mean, they're, they're winning games and this is how they won the Super Bowl last year. It's just fantasy wise. He's not getting enough done, um, to warrant a high up pick. You got to wonder though, though, now that, uh, the chiefs have lost, um, Pacheco, um, they're going to have what P Ryan and what's the other rookie? Uh, Carson name? Steele. There's Steel. talks too about them signing Kareem Hunt by chance. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. So if their running game takes a hit, they may rely more on right. Mahomes in the passing game. So let's let's see how that plays out. I mean, yeah. it's week two. He had a down week. Let's see if he rebounds. He's still surrounded with a lot of talent. Right. So we'll see. I, I wouldn't give up on Mahomes just yet. Yeah. Uh, CeeDee Lamb had a decent game, but uh, th- this game was a blowout from the start. The Saints just dominated the oh, Cowboys. I don't know why I took so much pleasure in that. Oh, it's it's great to see the Cowboys <laughs> lose. Um, DK Metcalf had a huge game. I thought I was nervous about DK Metcalf in our big league. I almost sat him because he struggled against his the cornerback that he faced in week one, which is one of the best cornerbacks in the league. And then week two, they played New England, who has Christian Gonzalez, who's another young cornerback who's pretty good. Um, and he did good uh, week one against uh, Cincinnati, Jamar Chase. So I was a little nervous about DK Metcalf. But if you decided to play him, you were rewarded. Yeah. 10 catches, 129 yards, and a touchdown. 28.9. Yeah. Uh, Derrick Henry kind of doing what he does. You know, he's he's not had any, like, crazy big games, but he's getting a touchdown each game so far. Um, Najee Harris, uh, Pittsburgh is – they're winning on their defense, not their offense. Yeah. And then Travis Kelsey, he's one of those guys that – he had one of those games where – they had a 41-yard catch that got called back because of a penalty. He also, one of his one catch or whatever was short of the goal line by like a half a yard or something like that. Yeah. And then they ran it in. Amari Cooper getting bad quarterback play from Deshaun Watson. Michael Pittman getting bad quarterback play from Anthony Richardson. And uh, yeah, Marie's team is just struggling at the moment. And I don't know if they had any bench players. No. She wanted. She said she should have played Devin Singletary because they were playing Washington, but no big deal. Yeah. So bench didn't really matter too much. You know, getting back to that Dallas loss against the Saints, when I was at uh, Ford Field, every time they showed a highlight from that game of the Saints scoring or if they brought the score up on the screen, the crowd erupted. Yeah. Like, I don't know why Detroit hates Dallas so much. Does it go all the way back to those pass interference calls from – Years ago, oh, yeah. but it's Detroit all the calls. hates Dallas. The ineligible Dan Skipper, <laughs> you know. It, yeah, they, we don't like the Cowboys. <laughs> and most people don't, so. Okay, uh, moving on to the next team <coughs> matchup. This one hurt. Yeah. This one hurt. Um, I really was hoping my team would get back-to-back 150-point games, and we just didn't quite get there. Tracy did. And uh, so Tracy beat me 150 to 144. Um, I hate to say this. You would have beaten one, two, three, four, five other teams in our league, but Mm -hmm. you just happened to go against Tracy's top-notch team. Yeah, and it was rough because, I mean, she did lose Jefferson for most of the game. Uh, He got knocked out pretty early, but he did make his big – 99 yard catch touchdown or whatever it was. was so impressive. Um, and then I lost Cooper cup really early, but he didn't do anything in that period of time. Um, Josh Allen struck. Well, he didn't struggle. The bills just dominated the dolphins. So he didn't have to do anything. Um, and then I had Bijan Robinson and Devonte Smith going last night, which I was kind of excited about and they did all right overall. But um, I was hoping Devontae Smith would have an even bigger game with A.J. Brown being out. Uh, so I thought I would have more opportunity <laughs> to make a comeback. And then um, B. John Robinson had a pretty good game running the ball, but uh, they didn't throw it to him as much as I thought they could. 
um, at certain times. And then <laughs> the thing that kind of hurt me is that I did have uh, Philadelphia's defense who was going against Atlanta. So every time Atlanta was scoring at the end, I needed Bijan to get a catch or two or run the ball well. But then that would lead them to score, and then Philadelphia's defense would lose points because Philadelphia's defense got one sack. That was yeah. the only thing they did all game. Um, so I didn't get anything from the defense. And then the big the big winner of the week was Alvin Kamara. <coughs> he just went crazy. Every time I turned on red zone and I checked on my phone, Alvin Kamara was going into the end zone. Well, he, he is the sole reason you lost. Yeah. But to get 44 points from one player. I mean, you take his score off the board, and she's barely cracking 100. Right. So Kamara uh, gets credit for that win. Yeah, and normally you would think, oh, Jamar Chase had seven points, Laporta had three, Dak Prescott had 12. Man, I'm going to win this week. Yeah. And then you look over and you see Kamara have 44. <laughs> um, the thing that stinks for me is, like, Alvin Kamara has now become, like, a kryptonite to me in fantasy because I don't know if you remember, what was it, like, Christmas game um, a few years ago? Alvin Kamara had like five touchdowns and that was like a week one of playoff fantasy playoffs one year. Yeah. And I lost because of that. So I've seen a lot of Kamara's biggest games um, and it's terrifying. Yeah. When you hear the term league winner, that's what they're talking about. A guy who could put up 44 points in one game. Yeah. And so far he's leading all players in scoring so far this season. Wow. Um, which is pretty crazy to see. Um, she got 11 points from her, her Jets defense, so even that was kind of the difference between defenses for us. Um, I didn't really leave anything on the <coughs> the bench necessarily. Right. Um, Tony Pollard had a good game, but I'm not really going to start him over anybody else. I would have had to start him over Cooper Cup, and that's just not going to happen. So it was just an unfortunate week for me. I know Tracy had said that she was a little upset that she – I can't remember. She, she she was griping about leaving points on the bench, right? Like yeah. Zay Flowers. And the only person I would have replaced, I guess, personally, would have been Javante Williams. Um, that was a, a bit of a weird play to me, but... He still put up 11 points. Right. So it's nothing too crazy. I wouldn't overthink that too much, but... How are you going to handle your cup loss? Um, I'm hoping that T. Higgins comes back. <laughs> That's kind of the the hope, because the Bengals are playing the Commanders, and the Commanders are probably the worst defense in the league. Um, but if if Higgins is not healthy in time, <laughs> the plan at the moment is playing Tony Pollard. Um, I'm a little nervous about the rookie wide receivers. I would love to play like Brian Thomas or Xavier Worthy, but I think I just want the, the easier points, and Tony Pollard's been pretty good so far. So I guess I'm a little surprised to see Worthy on your bench considering the big game he had in week one. Yeah, I, I just think my my wide receiver is like Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, uh, Malik Neighbors, and Devontae Smith. Um, I thought about benching Malik Neighbors, but then I saw he was playing Washington. And again, Washington's defense is just so bad that I, I couldn't see Xavier Worthy fitting in anywhere. Um, just because he's, he's low volume, he had two touchdowns. It's just not my type of guy that I would play. But I'm hoping that he can start elevating his play now that Pacheco's out. Nice to see another rookie wide receiver like Neighbors uh, put up 28.7 points, man. That's yeah. The, some of these rookie wide receivers who, you know, traditionally it takes a while for them to get a, accustomed to an NFL league. Mm -hmm. And, boy, some of these, and Al Harrison Jr., Neighbors, right. and Worthy last week. And, boy, these rookies are coming in and hitting the ground running. Yeah, they just get going right away. I mean, even Brian Thomas, he's had two touchdowns in – or. No, he didn't get a touchdown in the last game. He was close. Um, but he's had, like, two big chunk plays to start his season off. So, yeah, it's a good time. So it's things to fall to one and one, but I am leading the, the league in points. So I guess there's some sort of uh, <laughs> consolation prize. Yeah. Um, the next matchup we have is Malik. He scored 128.7, uh, beating Ian 106. And, and Ian just kind of had a, a, rough, a rough go of it this week. Um, Evan Ingram got ruled out kind of late, so I'm sure he just missed that one. Um, Mike Evans didn't really do anything at a, against Detroit. That was all Chris Godwin, as you saw live and in person. Yeah, yeah, uh, Godwin had just a monster game. Mm -hmm. uh, Jaden Reed with um, Jordan Love being out, I think the Packers wide receiver is going to struggle a lot, um, so that'll be something to monitor going forward. Zamir White just... 
Las Vegas was down most of the game, so they were throwing the ball. Saquon Barkley did pretty good. Um, missed the end zone one play, and then well, I thought course, that was a touchdown. And yeah. All of a sudden they're lining up, and I'm like, is, "Wait, is they're going for a two on this?" Like, because like I said, I was watching Eli and Peyton, and they talk as if they're not even watching the game, and right. so somehow I missed the fact that that. Uh, that touchdown wasn't a touchdown. I, yeah. I thought for sure it was a touchdown. Yeah, so his knee was down just a half a yard short, oh, which brutal. led to the tush push Jalen Hurts touchdown. That's the risk you take when you have a Eagles running back. Yeah. He also left a point on the board because he dropped the game-winning pass that he could have had. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Saquon, I mean, he's, he's doing great, though, with the Eagles. Um, Garrett Wilson struggling with the Jets, even though the Jets won. Uh, he's just not getting the volume that he got last year, so maybe it's still Aaron Rodgers, you know, warming up. But that's kind of a concern for that early of a pick. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown got banged up. I felt like multiple times in this game, but still had a killer game. Eleven catches for 119 yards. Yeah, he was all over the place. He he looked like he was in his prime on mm-hmm. Sunday. I guess he's dealing with some sort of an injury, but. Um, yeah, he had a really nice looking game. Yeah. It looked to me, and I kind of said this going into the Lions game, that they're going to have to force the ball into him because in week one, he didn't do anything. Yeah, I was like, why are you not throwing the ball to your star receiver? I think they made a, a concerted effort to get the ball into the hands of St. Brown, and it showed. Yeah, and I think the, and Malik and I will get into this to our podcast tomorrow, but like, I think the problem too with the Lions right now is that like, I saw Sam Laporta open a lot. And I feel like with Jamison Williams stepping up this year, they might have like an embarrassment of riches that they can't get everybody the ball. And not that that's like a problem, but it just seems like they're trying to force feed one person because they felt like in the last game, they didn't get it to that person enough where it's not like, it's not as fluid, I feel like. Well, I heard like, uh, I don't know if it was later that day after the, the Lions game or maybe it was the next day, but uh, Sports Talk Radio was kind of griping about how the Lions had Laporta in blocking. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's a rare talent at tight end, quite possibly yeah. the best tight end in the league. Mm-hmm. Why is he in there blocking? Right. You have other tight ends that can go in there and block. Yeah. And then when he's standing there waving his hands, saying, I'm wide open, uh, mm-hmm. Goff's not seeing him for some reason. Yeah. So. They need to fix that. They right. need to do something about that. Yeah, they got to figure out a way to balance the offense. But um, then Ian had Justin Herbert kind of got bailed out by getting two touchdowns because the Chargers were able to just run all over Carolina. Carolina, who oh boy, let's hope that Andy Dalton does better because otherwise they could go zero <laughs> in sixteen. Yeah. I mean, every season there's a worse team in the in the league, and uh, right now it's looking to be the Panthers. Uh, they just look hopeless. Yeah. And then Malik kind of got solid effort from everybody. Um, Nico Collins has actually even impressed me. Yeah, he's uh, shining. Had a huge game, eight catches, 135 yards, and a touchdown for 27 and a half points. Um, then George Kittle had a big game with Debo getting banged up. And, man, Brandon Ayuk – it just does not look great. Something yeah, let's is see off. what happens with, with Debo missing a few weeks. Uh, Ayuk's going to have to step up. Mm-hmm. He's going to have to step up and, uh, and you know, be the guy who earned that, that salary he just negotiated. Yeah. Um, Lamar Jackson had a very average day. Didn't do anything special, but he did get a touchdown. Had some, some rushing yards to save his day. Jameson Williams continuing to have a great season so far. Um, Tyreek Hill struggled a lot. That's going to be one to monitor now that they have Skylar Thompson as their starting quarterback, at least for this week. Well, God, when he came in and, and placed a Tua, he looked like he didn't belong there. He looked yeah. like a high school or college quarterback coming in there and just taking sacks and yeah. looking lost out there. Um, mm-hmm. I hate to say it with this only, you know, just completing week two, but Dolphins look done. Yeah. I don't know what they're going to do to make up for the loss of Tua. Yeah, I feel like they're going to have to look at signing somebody. Um, but you never know. It, it's going to be tough for them. That's that's for sure. I would be uh, nervous about owning any Dolphin right now. Yeah, I would too. Um, then on the benches, Malik had Buffalo's defense, which was huge, but probably didn't expect Tua to – not only did Tua get 
knocked out of the game. He also just had a really bad game throughout it. He threw yeah. three picks. Um, Buffalo returned one, got a touchdown. And uh, so he left those points on the board. And Kyle, uh, Kyler, Kyler Murray, Murray had a really big yeah. game. Um, yeah. Ian didn't really leave anything. I guess Brock Bowers um, showing that he might be an elite tight end in this league already as a rookie, similar to how Sam Laporta did last year. Um, so yeah, we'll I mean, see. You know, I'd be nervous about uh, the Raiders, but my gosh, to, to defeat Baltimore mm -hmm. uh, in Baltimore, now you got to look at the Raiders and go, is something magical happening over there? Yeah, and even if it's not, they've already – I think they're leading the league in passing right now mm. um, as far as yardage. So maybe it's, you know, before it's been Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers, maybe they shift that and it's Devontae Adams and Brock Bowers now. And they funnel to those guys a lot, so they might get a lot of a lot of yardage. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, and then finally, the old classic matchup. I don't want to call it the game of the W-E-A-K, but uh... – because I mean, we put up some decent points. Yeah. But, you know, after last season when I defeated the Buckeye uh, because his quarterback, which uh, happened to be Hurts, uh, threw two interceptions at the end of the game to give me the win, mm -hmm. I kind of felt bad. Like, okay, if he gets the win this week, I'll be okay with it. Yeah. So heading into the Monday night game, I had about a, like a four-and-a-half point lead heading into Monday night. Like I said at the beginning of the podcast, he found out. This is kind of funny. He found out on Sunday that uh, that AJ Brown was uh, going to be out. Mm -hmm. And while I was looking at my phone at the Lions game, I got a notification that Buckeye had picked up uh, Jahan Dotson mm -hmm. to replace AJ Brown, which I thought was interesting because he had a lot of guys on his bench. Yeah. And uh, but instead of going to his bench, he picked up Dotson. And Dotson had one catch Yeah, for 1.6 points. He only needed five to get the win. Mm -hmm. He did not get it. I sat on my sofa in disbelief that I had somehow pulled off a win over the Buckeye. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I think he overthought things. And I know Dotson was listed on the depth chart as the you know, the, the number one receiver on the other side of the ball. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he only got one catch. Yeah. Goddard kept catching pass after pass after pass. And who was the other receiver? Covey. That, Covey. Every was time like his first game, I believe. Yeah. I was, every time he caught the ball, I was like, who's that? Yeah. And, uh, I'm like, wow, Covey was catching pass after pass after pass. So yeah. those guys, Covey and Goddard, uh, I think handed me the win because, Dotson wasn't didn't have a single catch in the second half. Yeah, and I, I hate to say that this is like a told you so moment, but after the draft recap, I had mentioned to Sammy, at least on the podcast, he has only one wide receiver on his bench. All the rest were running. So back. he had Tank Dell and AJ Brown in his, as his main wide receivers, and then he had Roma Dunze on his bench, and he had nothing but running backs. <laughs> then not only this week. Does he decide to pick up Jordan Mason? But he also decided to play Jordan Mason over James Cook, who had 28 and a half points, and Jordan Mason had 17.4. That was a head scratcher. When uh, on Thursday night, seeing Cook blowing up on Thursday night, mm -hmm. only to find out that he was on Buckeye's bench. Yeah. That was a head scratcher. Right. And I know Jordan Mason has played really good in Christian McCaffrey's absence. But the problem becomes similar to what we said multiple times last year with Becky's quarterbacks. When you have too many of a good thing, it's hard to make the right decision. Mm -hmm. And in this case, if he would have picked up, I mean, we'll get to the waivers later, of any old wide receiver to replace A.J. Brown. Now, you didn't know A.J. Brown going into the week was going to be hurt. Yeah. But he had other options. And... It's a tough loss, of course, to lose by that little, but that's where I think Sammy might may want to take a look and maybe update that uh, that wide receiver depth. And uh, yeah, now, not, like I said, on my side of the ball, a lot of disappointing performances. Stafford, who everyone expected to have a big week against Arizona, six point six four points. Mm -hmm. um, 
who else? Uh, I picked up the Rams tight end, hoping there might be some connection there. 2.2 points. Uh, Diggs had an underwhelming uh, performance, uh, only seven points. Um, so there were some disappointments, but my win, my win came, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> went down the wrong pipe. Uh, Godwin, 24 points against the Lions. He mm-hmm. just looked unstoppable until the second half. For some reason, he didn't do anything in the second half. Yeah. So all of those points were uh, in the first half. Uh, Brees Hall, uh, you know, I kind of. I, I was resigned to drafting Brees Hall when you stole B. John <laughs> from me, but Brees Hall has been uh, a nice uh, producer for me, 24 points. And so far, he's been better than B. John on the season. So. Yeah. Uh, now, I did lose Pacheco, which is heartbreaking. Um, I do have uh, I have Eckler on my bench. I think I'm – it's either going to be Eckler or Ford yeah. going in to fill that slot next week. Uh, so we'll see, but losing Pacheco hurts cause he, he's had back to back really good games, mm-hmm. uh, two weeks into the season. Uh, we'll see, uh, what is, he has a broken fibula or something. So yeah. he's going to miss, uh, quite a bit. So, uh, again, that's why you try to draft depth. Fractured um, fibula. Uh, what's that? Fractured. Fi- so I'm yeah. reading the update. Yeah. Uh, undergo surgery, fractured right fibula and require at least six weeks to recover. Yeah. So I'm not, I mean, I hopefully, you know, right now he's just listed as out. Let's get him on IR so I can throw him on IR and well, fill that spot. And in, in Yahoo, if they're listed as out, you can fill them into the IR. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's going to go on to IR. I'm not going to cut him loose. And, um, you know, Eckler, he's, he's still catching passes, which is kind of exciting. Yeah. Uh, he did put up 11.5 uh, points on my bench. Uh, so, you know, I, I like Eckler, mm-hmm. uh, Ford still is the, uh, number one running back for Cleveland. Uh, they pulled out a, a surprise win, uh, over Jacksonville. I thought Jacksonville would come in and mop yeah. the floor with Cleveland, but it looks like Cleveland still has a little bit of life yeah. despite their quarterback play and Cleveland's um, Cleveland's schedule real quick. They play the giants this week. Then they play the Raiders. Then they play the commanders. Then yeah. they play Philly who is also not a very good defense. Cincinnati, not a very good defense. So they have a pretty easy schedule. So Jerome Ford might might be worth worthwhile. Yeah. Um, and I'm also kind of excited knowing that <clears throat> I got lucky to get this win this week. Uh, there's talk that next week I should be getting Ferguson back. Mm. They said that he could have gone in week two if they yeah. really needed him, but they wanted to rest him. So I'm excited to get Ferguson back, hopefully next week. So, um, so d- you know, despite the loss of Pacheco, I'm still optimistic that I still have a, a – oh, I do lose Debo too. Yeah. Uh, but I do have Ayuk. So I'm going to bench Debo and replace him with Ayuk and hope that he, you know, picks up uh, – he earns that contract that he has. Yeah. Um, are you nervous about your quarterbacks at all? Because Stafford well, coming off a rough game and then Purdy with – you know, without Christian McCaffrey, it seems like San Francisco has struggled. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not real nervous about my quarterbacks. I'm going to look at matchups and see how it plays out. Um, I, I'm on the fence whether I want to start Stafford or Purdy uh, in week three. Mm-hmm. But, no, I'm not, I'm not in panic mode just yet. Okay. Just curious. Um, all right. Let's uh, go to some players for injury replacements and whatever you may need. Um, let's just go to flex guys first. <clears throat> and of course, like I said, in this smaller league, there's plenty of good options. And right at the top, I have two of my guys starred. J.K. Dobbins and Ramondi Stevenson are still out there. Mm. So if you need a quality running back, there are good options. Either of those two would be really good. Even Zach Charbonnet down below, if by chance Kenneth Walker is still hurt, um, those three guys are probably your best options. Sammy, you do not need another running back, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Now, I can't remember if it was in our own TV league or if it was a different league, but I see Ridley on the waiver wire, and I think I may have dropped him mm. uh, heading into week two. And, of course, he has a two-touchdown game, yes. right? Yes, you did. You, so, you drafted him, and then you dropped him. Yeah. 
So uh, Ridley might be a good pickup if he continues to be their their guy. Yeah, he looked really good. They even used him on a, a rushing touchdown, <coughs> kind of a trick play. Um, so yeah, if they, if they can get him going, he could be a really good option. I also see uh, Shahid on the waiver wire. Yep. Uh, you know, we talked earlier that the way the Saints are playing, uh, you just want a piece of it. Mm -hmm. You want to like buy stock in the Saints. Yeah. And so Shahid might be a good uh, pickup if you need some depth. Yeah. Week, at wide receiver. Week one beating Carolina, everybody was like, eh, okay, it's Carolina. But then to blow out Dallas like that and have back to back games of over forty four points. It's just crazy. Yeah. And now they're going to play Philadelphia, who's not a very good defense. Um, they could have a crazy start to their season. Um, so, yeah, I would like to have a part of the Saints offense if possible. Um, so the wide receivers are plentiful. Even Quentin Johnston, uh, who a lot of people wrote off um, after his really terrible rookie year. Yeah. He came back last week and had two touchdowns. Yeah. Looked like uh, Justin Herbert's favorite target there. So there's some good options for wide receiver. Another like kind of sleeper guy, if you like Michigan State players, Jalen Naylor for Minnesota, <coughs> especially if Justin Jefferson is still banged up to any capacity going into this game, that might be a decent idea. Um, tight end, Hunter Henry had a huge game. Um, did he have just one? Did he have a touchdown or just he a did. lot of catches? I, I no, uh, he no, had, he just, no, he went over 100 yards receiving. Yeah, Damn. so he had eight catches, 109 yards, 12 targets, which is crazy. Um, New England's quarterback, Jacoby Brissett, is known for throwing to his tight ends. Um, the only thing is you'll have to make a decision quickly because they do play Thursday night this week against the mm -hmm. Jets. Um, yeah. But that's a good tight end option if you needed it. Yeah, and considering the way tight ends are playing this season, uh, anyone who looks remotely productive, you might want to snag. Yeah. Or Mike Gesicki for Cincinnati. He's become a pretty big target for Joe Burrow now that T. Higgins has been out of the lineup, lineup the first two weeks. We'll see if he comes back this week. Um, but again, they are playing Washington, who is just a terrible defense, and teams can expose that defense. So yeah. a couple tight end options. I don't know if anybody really needs a quarterback. Um, that's the hard part about this league, but... Baker well, yeah. Mayfield, Derek Carr, Geno Smith have all had really good starts to their season. You've, uh, you know, you asked me if I was panicking about my quarterback, so I've been, I'm looking at him right now. I mean, Mayfield, you know, he's he's been looking really good, but he he looked vulnerable against the Lions. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that offensive line, it, they just kind of just opened the curtain and uh, let uh, uh, Hutchinson just yeah. just have his way with Mayfield, <laughs> yeah. like. It reminded me of the scene in the longest yard when they were letting the defense just beat up on the quarterback. I mean, Mayfield took some hits behind that offensive line, so there was yeah. some vulnerability there. But but mm -hmm. then he goes and he hit like Godwin for a forty yard touchdown. Yeah. So and he had the rushing touchdown. He he had yeah. a little bit of rushing in him to get yeah. away. So and then you know Darnold, who's been surprisingly impressive, connects mm -hmm. with Jefferson on that ninety plus yard touchdown. Yeah. So there are options there, but. You know, do I want to drop one of my two quarterbacks for one of those guys? Probably not just yet. Yeah, right. Or Derek Carr, like we said, part of that Saints offense has just been killer. Yeah. So plenty of options as usual. Let's look at defenses. I always I always think defenses are kind of important week to week um, if you're kind of swapping between defenses every once in a while. Um, Chicago playing Indianapolis could actually be a pretty good one. Um Anthony Richardson throwing three picks last week. Chicago's defense has been their bright spot so far of their their team. And then uh, Houston playing Minnesota. Houston's actually surprised me on defense. Um, even though, you know, Minnesota is playing well on offense, I think Houston's defense could still give them trouble. Also, uh, you got to look at what Green Bay's going through, and they're mm -hmm. going to be facing Tennessee's defense. Um, there could be a possibility for points there. Yeah, or <laughs> even the other side, Green Bay's defense – against Tennessee because Will Levis likes to just throw it up sometimes and he throws some picks here and there. And Green Bay's defense has been pretty good. So, yeah, plenty of good defensive options if if that's what you're in need for. That's kind of what I've been doing in all my leagues are kind of streaming defenses based on the opponent. Yeah. And if I see that, you know, an opponent's been uh, giving up points to defenses, I've been having fun. I mean, it doesn't – cost anything to add right. and drop defenses every week yeah it'd no, be different if we paid per transaction but <laughs> right. but no it's it doesn't cost anything yeah so why not yeah sometimes the only hardest part about that it, i do the same thing 
is you have to look ahead a little bit just to find out like, oh, can I keep this team for, you know, a couple weeks or is it just going to be one? And then you have to figure out the next person. So it's a little bit of a, a tough thing to juggle, but it is, it, it's fun to do in my opinion. Yeah. And it can be really effective. You know, uh, Detroit's uh, playing Arizona uh, at Arizona and it's weird here that they're, they're saying that Arizona offense ranks near the bottom against defenses, but uh, Arizona has the potential to put up points. Now, yeah. um, like I said, you know, Hutchinson's been just lights out. And so, you know, do you want to risk, you know, picking up Detroit defense against Kyler Murray, Murray in the, in the cards? I, I don't know, but yeah. uh, you know, Hutchinson had his hand in like four and a half sacks on mm -hmm. Sunday. So that alone, that's, you know, that's some points right there. So, right. but I don't know if I'd be comfortable starting him against Arizona, but I would definitely look to start Detroit against uh weaker offenses. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's definitely things you have to look into. And then even like, I know they're not available. Like Pittsburgh's defense is so good, but they don't always put up a ton of points because you know, their offense isn't, isn't very good. So sometimes they're out on the field too much, but it, it's a balancing act, but. Yeah. yeah, streaming defense is definitely a good option. Yeah. Um, all right, let's look at our week three matchups. Um, I'll just go from the top, and I am the highest projected scorer at 135.8. Um, expected to knock Malik off of his undefeated streak. He's expected to get 126 points, and I believe... Yeah, I have one of the Monday night games. I got Josh Allen going against Jacksonville. Hopefully he can bounce back from uh, last week's game and be able to be competitive. Um, Sunday night, Bijan taking on Kansas City. That should be a fun matchup. Mm -hmm. um, could be a high-scoring game, especially if Atlanta keeps building off of what they just did against the Eagles. Yeah. Um, and then Detroit playing Arizona, like we just mentioned, that could be a high-scoring game. So Jameer Gibbs against Arizona could be really fun. Uh, and then Malik's got uh, Travis Etienne on the other side of the Buffalo game for Jacksonville. He's got Lamar Jackson is playing Dallas. That should be a competitive game. He's got Jamison Williams, which is terrifying because, uh, again, Arizona can give up points. Their defense isn't that great. Um, Tyreek Hill, that's, that's going to be an interesting one. That's going to be one to watch. Seattle has a really good secondary, but maybe – you know, with this extra week of practice now, maybe Skylar Thompson can have a little bit more chemistry with Tyreek Hill and maybe get him back to what he was. My money's on uh, Seattle defense. Mm, interesting. I'm not, I don't know where I'm at yet with that, but I can definitely understand it. Uh, the thing I'm actually most scared of, George Kittle against the Rams. Yeah. Uh, the Rams are awful against tight ends. And with Debo being out, with Christian McCaffrey being out, I think George Kittle is the number one guy. And, you know, seeing what the Rams defense uh, yeah. allowed on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, terrifying. You might want to start your Niners. Yeah. Um, and then Nico Collins playing against Minnesota. That should be interesting, to say the least. Um, and, yeah, so it should be a pretty close matchup. I'm probably going to look for a different defense with Philadelphia playing New Orleans. Um, <laughs> I haven't figured out exactly what defense I'm going to go after yet. But uh, I will be switching that up, and then, like we said, this is kind of the same thing that uh, Tracy had or Becky had last year. Malik's got a decision to make whether to play Kyler Murray against Detroit or stick with Lamar against Dallas. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know where I would be with that situation. It's kind of a variation on what you said earlier. When you have two good quarterbacks, uh, you don't have one good quarterback, right? So. Yeah. It seems like no matter who you start, it's going to be the wrong guy. Yeah. Um, luckily, both of us are missing players. He's missing Puka Nakua. I'm going to be missing Cooper Cup. Hopefully, T. Higgins, like I said, can get out there because I would like to start him against the Washington Commanders if possible. Um, but if not, I do have Tony Pollard ready to go in the meantime. Mm. Um, next on my sheet is uh, the other undefeated team, the Hollywood Blockbusters. Yeah. Taking on the halftime honeybees. How do you she, feel about this matchup? She's favored, which is insulting. Well, she came off. She's the highest scoring <laughs> team from the past week. How are you feeling about this matchup? I'm fairly confident. Um, 
let's see. Hertz uh, kind of looked mediocre in that loss to uh, the Falcons. Uh, Marvin Harrison's going up against that Detroit defense. We'll see how that plays out. That's a little scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, London, you know, had a nice game. Uh, he can, he continue that against KC. Um, I don't know. Both she, running backs in the Detroit, Arizona game. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, she's got some good matchups. Um, like I said, I, I'm going to, I looks like I'm going to start Purdy against that Rams defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Godwin right now is just plug and play. There's, yeah. you know, no reason to question starting him against anybody right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ayuk, this is his uh, opportunity to to show what he has in the absence of Debo. Right. Uh, Brees Hall has been consistent. Uh, Kyron Williams been kind of up and down, but I'm leaving him in. Yeah. Like I said, hopefully getting Ferguson back. Uh, Diggs, I'll probably leave in the lineup, even though he had a little bit of a down weekend or a, a down Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, I'm, I like. Diggs. Uh, he's, he got a lot of targets. Yeah. Uh, the ball didn't quite reach him on some occasions, but mm-hmm. I think I'm just going to leave Diggs in there. I put Eckler in the lineup. Like I said, he's you know always good for a couple of catches. Moody can go off. And then I got the San Francisco defense uh, against uh, that Rams quarterback. So yeah. um, it's going to be close, but I'm confident. And my goal is to go 3-0. Yeah. Well, the good news is that most likely if you're winning, if you win the week in fantasy, it most likely means that the Lions have won the game. Yeah. Because again, <laughs> Becky has three Arizona players <laughs> um, and they're three best players besides their quarterback. So hopefully, honestly, I'll probably be rooting for you this week just for that reason. Yeah. And I feel like Detroit kind of got punched in the mouth on Sunday. Yeah. And uh, I think they're going to come out with a chip on their shoulder. I think they need something to prove because mm-hmm. if they if they start the season off one and two, you might start hearing same old lions and yeah. uh they're they're not they're not gonna allow that to happen. So right. uh it's gonna be a fun game. I hope it's a high scoring game and let's hope the Lions come out on top. Yeah. Uh next matchup we have with the list we have Ian's team taking on Marie and Kelsey later, which right now we might as well just Kelsey later <laughs> sitting at zero and two, um, but she is projected to win this game actually pretty handily. Yeah, um, we'll have to wait and see what en- Evan Ingram status is, but maybe Ian just plays Brock Bowers. Like I said, um, he should have a good matchup, I believe. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're playing Carolina, so I would think that Brock Bowers is going to be inserted into that starting lineup. Um, he might, Ian might be getting Kenneth Walker back as well. Who's playing Miami. Um, so it's, there's a kind of a lot of toss ups for him. Amon Ross St. Brown, um, like we said, was kind of banged up in the last game. Everything points that he should be good to go, but it's still something we'll have to monitor as the week goes on. And then for, he's not going to leave Herbert in against that Pittsburgh defense. Oh yeah. He? That's, that's a good point. I don't know. Cause Anthony Richardson's playing Chicago's defense and he just threw yeah. three picks in this last game. Um, so that might be a that might be a point of contention for Ian this week is figuring out what to do with his quarterbacks, because um, Justin Herbert historically has been pretty good, but the Chargers have just been able to run the ball so much. But maybe they can't run the ball against Pittsburgh and they throw it. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I and don't. It's at Pittsburgh. Yeah, I I don't envy the position. That's that's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, and then for Marie's team, they just kind of need to bounce back, especially Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Any week that they have like a good week combined, she's most likely going to win the week. Um, but they just haven't they haven't hooked up like that yet. So yeah, kind of a wait and see there. She could get cute and play Jared Goff against Arizona, but Ooh. that's one of those things that sometimes when you get cute to to bench Mahomes, that's when he goes off. I don't I don't know. You were more willing to do it than I was last year. Yeah. Um, and it, it seemed to pay off. So maybe that's something Marie has to start thinking about. We'll see, I think I would give, uh, that Mahomes Kelsey connection one more week. Yeah. I just feel like they're due. Mm-hmm. Like you said, they were really close on some big plays this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, I would give, uh, Mahomes and Kelsey one more week. Yeah. And, uh, if, if it doesn't happen, then she's got to start thinking about making changes. It, right. I mean, you can't go 0 and 3. Yeah. It, that's when it gets really scary. The other nice thing for Kansas City playing Atlanta on Sunday night, 
Atlanta has really good secondary, um, which their linebackers aren't as good, so there might be more room for Travis Kelsey to get some passes over the middle. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Luckily, yeah. it's a, it'll be fun because she'll get to watch them in a primetime game. Yeah. Um, but no, other than that, no real big injuries they have to worry about. So yeah, should yeah. be close. Cooper's been a, a bit of a disappointment so far. I mean, obviously there's all the not only on field struggles yeah. but off field struggles for their quarterback. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, Cooper had a pretty big uh, year last year, and so far, yeah, uh, boy. Other than you know the Cleveland running game, I, I don't know right. if I trust anybody. I, and I think this is another big one because they're playing the Giants, and if Cleveland can't put up numbers against the Giants. They're in for a long season. Yeah. So that's that's one of those ones where you, if you can't take advantage of it, then you, I'd be real nervous going forward. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, and then finally, oh, man, this is another fun matchup. <laughs> Sammy taking on Tracy. <laughs> uh, right now, Tracy is projected to beat Sammy. But I know Sammy holds a grudge for Tracy taking his defense, um, the New York Jets, in the draft after he mispicked. Um, so there's probably a little animosity there. Um, these are probably also the two of the biggest trash talkers in the league. If, right. if I would say, um, so kind of a, a fun thing to see. Plus Sammy's Owen two. He's in the same boat as Marie where he is desperate for a win. Um, and right now he has tank Dell and Roman Dunze in his wide receiver slots. I notice uh, Dotson's been relegated to the bench, <laughs> yeah. and I would not be surprised if he got cut loose yeah. on waiver wire day. Yeah, I would agree with that. I I would imagine him being cut immediately <laughs> um, and being exiled for the rest of Sammy's <laughs> fantasy football career. Might be one of those guys that, you know, you just say, I'm done with him. That's kind of how I am. If I rely on somebody to get me the win and they just get one catch, they are dead to me. Yeah. Um, right now, Sammy has Aaron Jones playing over James Cook. Wow. And wait a minute. He he hasn't set his lineup yet because Devon Achan is still out. He's sitting on his bench. And I know that, you know, hmm. people think that with no Tua that teams might be focusing on their run game. But right now, I don't think you can sit a Chan. No, not after that performance. So we'll see what, what Sammy's running backs look like once he finally sets his lineup because they're I just can't believe that that's what he's gonna go with. No. And if it is, that's a bold call and we'll we'll see how it works out for him. <laughs> he's playing chess. The rest of us are playing checker. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um and then Tracy, she's got Joe Mixon is questionable. I heard there's a potential that he could miss the game. Wow. Um, but I think it's one of those ones where it's going to be right on the, the cusp of game time. So one to monitor throughout the week. His backup is Cam Akers, um, or who's most likely to get um, play time is Cam Akers. So if if you needed a running back to replace him, you could look at that. But Well, she does have uh, Robinson Jr. on her bench. Yeah, and he's been, he's been Monday night. great. Yeah, um, so I don't know if she <clears throat> necessarily needs to pick up Mixon's backup. Right. Um, I think the one decision she's going to have to make, I'm sure she's going to sit Javante Williams, but who do you insert? Chris Olave, who hasn't really been great, even though New Orleans has been scoring a lot. You would have thought he would have been more involved, but he just right. hasn't been. So yeah. I also feel like there's going to be a bounce back game for Olave. Or do you go with Zay Flowers, who's had, had a really a good season so game far? Last week, yeah. yeah, so there, there's some decisions there for that final flex spot um, to be made. Um, so this will, be, I think this will be a big, a big matchup of how these two decide who's going to start. Yeah, um, could be a big influence on this game. What's losing AJ fun. Brown for Buckeye? That's that's hurts. Yeah, it, it is going to hurt him. But again, goes back to the depth on draft day. He only had three wide receivers that he even drafted. Yep. Um, so there's you know a certain liability that he has to hold. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it works out. Maybe he'll hit the waiver wire and uh, go from there. Uh, league standings, we've kind of gone over it, but I'll just bring it up on the screen. So technically, the Hollywood block- blockbusters are number one. Yes. 2-0. Uh, and oh, Scored a little bit more points than Malik's sixth place showboats, um, who was also 2-0. Two and, two and oh. Then me, Tracy, Becky, and Ian are all 1-1. One one Need with- I remind people of my poor draft grade yeah. on draft day and look at me now. Yeah. 
I, I had a terrible draft grade as well. Um, the only one that had a great draft grade and is doing well is Malik. Malik is 2-0. and He had the highest draft grade by far. Um, the rest of us are just kind of sitting in the middle. But again, I will point out, I have the most points scored. That's right. And oh, I don't have the most points against that goes to Sammy, which is usually what I call the most unlucky person in the league. Yeah. Point I mean points against is out of your control. Yeah. And uh yeah, if, if you're if you're week after week you're facing one of the top point getters mm -hmm. in the league, that's just bad luck. Yeah. Um so hopefully, you know, those bottom two can turn it around and maybe make some more moves to figure out their team. But um, other than that, if you guys, again, with so many injuries, I'm sure this will be a bigger week for people hitting the waiver wire, per perhaps. I know you already said you're going to move Pacheco into the IR. Excuse yeah. me, the IR. Exactly. Um, and have to pick some people up. I'm looking at a defense or two, and... Um, Maybe swapping out one of my flex positions, but I'm not exactly sure yet. Haven't fully looked it over. Um, so make sure you get in your waiver wires tonight. And good luck in week three. And Man, throw out a trade or two. Why not? Yeah. It's fun. If anybody ever wants to trade, I'm always willing. As long as the offer is good, of course. But I'll always listen. I'll always try to counter offer. I think that's the biggest thing too for me. A lot of people will say, oh, I want to trade this person. And then you send them an offer and they just say no. Yeah. And they don't say like, well, maybe I could counter. I, I mean, sometimes you don't even want to counter because you may be too far off. But like if you're close, just be like, here, I could do this as a counter offer. Like, yeah. Have some back and forth. That's the fun part about it. Um, trades make the league fun. Now, I would say if you're 2-0 and like Malik and Joe, maybe be careful making trades. Um, Unless you're facing injuries. Like, you know, I've yeah. lost, I lost two players uh, right. in week two. So that's what you got to do. You want to better your team, so you need to look and see who needs improvement to their team. And maybe you have a player that will benefit them, and they have a player that benefits you. Right. That's what a successful trade does. You can't just offer scraps for a top tier player that's yeah. not going to work right and so you know again those teams that are zero and two if you guys start to go to zero and three zero and four you got to make something happen yeah and even if it's not always favorable sometimes it can just work out in your favor um so make some moves try to check your lineups see what's going on with your team try to make adjustments and hopefully everybody can get a win in week three, even though it's not possible. <laughs> but good luck to everybody. Um, and we'll be back next week with a week three recap and already moving on to week four, which just sounds crazy to think about. But good luck in week three, and we'll see you next week.